Hello friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie and today we are talking about everything I read in September. Yes, it is the final day of September and as much as I'm very sad to see this month go, obviously we are all excited for October. So I mean, the hype is real for the month of October. So can't lie about that. Um, let's jump right into what I read in September. I do have quite a number of books to talk about for this month. And yeah, let's just get right into it. The first book I completed in September was Shady Hollow, a murder mystery by Janu Black. I don't know if I'm saying her first name right, Janu Black. Actually, um, this is, there are two authors actually under one name. So I really should be saying there. Uh, Shady Hollow, a murder mystery. This is something I picked up completely on a whim. I saw it in a used bookstore and I was just like, I'd seen it around. Um, but then when I saw it in person, I was like, I have to get this. Um, this is a murder mystery taking place in a woodland town and all the townsfolk are like little woodland creatures. Uh, so it's very cozy, very cute, but there's a murder mystery. Um, I'm obsessed with this cover. I love it so much. And ultimately I did have a pretty good time with this actually. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. I gave it like around a 3.5. The only thing that was holding it back from a much higher rating was the ending, which is so unfortunate. Um, I'm not giving any spoilers, but I'll just say that this is like a very, I guess, straightforward mystery is the word I would use. I was just like expecting something better from the ending. I think the ending that they went with was pretty terrible to be completely honest. Like I think any ending other than the one they chose would have been better. But you know what? I still enjoyed my experience. It was still very cozy and I just, you know, I did have a good time with it. So much so that I decided to go ahead and just get the rest of the series because even though the ending was not my favorite, I still love the concept. It was a super fast read and it delivered exactly what I was expecting. Next up, I might have mentioned this in my August wrap up or yeah, because I was kind of like reading this book overlapped. Um, but that is Sundial by Katriana Ward. I actually did technically finish it in September. Um, Sundial is one, it's the third Katriana Ward that I've read before. And uh, sad to say, this is my least favorite of the three that I've read so far. Katriana Ward was one of my favorite off authors immediately after I read Looking Glass Sound by her. Um, this is, this is a 2022 book. It follows a mother and a daughter that have a very strained relationship. The, the daughter is a child. Um, and it seems like there is something, something different, something off about her. And the mother then decides to bring her back to her childhood home, which is this like off the grid ranch house thing in the middle of the desert. Um, it's called Sundial. So the mother brings her there and we kind of get a background of what happened at Sundial, what it is, the mother's past, all that uh, stuff. Um, it has a lot of the Catriona Ward-isms that I've come to recognize from her. Um, but for me, this one just was pretty forgettable. And I just like, I just did not care for this one at all. The twists, I was like, eh, okay. Um, I felt like it went on forever. And I mean, Catron Awards books do tend to go on maybe a little bit longer than they need to, but I always feel like they have some justification. This one, I was just like, I I'm ready for this to be done. Uh, I still gave it a three stars because I still think that Catron Award really just like goes so hard on plot. And you know, she's really out there trying to write the most insane story that she can think of. So like props for that. Um, but yeah, I was pretty let down by this. Um, I just didn't care for it. And definitely the way that she writes her characters really started to get on my nerves. Um, she makes them so weird and annoying and just like, they have this like weird way of talking that is kind of getting on my nerves because I've seen it done so many times now through her other works. So definitely Looking Glass Sound. <laughs> Her most recent work and the first book I read by her is by far my favorite, um, but I do have one more catch around award left on my shelf that is Little Eve, so I will definitely be getting to that um, just to see how I feel about her at the end of this reading experiment that I'm doing. And then I read Catalina by Carla Conejo Villavalencio. Whew, that last name, Villa V. Vicencio. 
I apologize. I absolutely did not get that right. But Catalina, I actually meant to do a recent release book review for this. And to be honest, I completely forgot to do it. Um, but I will give you that review now. I, I really enjoyed this. This is a very short book, which good news for me. I love short books. Um, this follows a Harvard student by the name of Catalina, and she is actually from um, an immigrant family from Ecuador, uh, but they are undocumented, and it really follows um, her first year at Harvard as she kind of navigates this world of this like ultra prestigious elite school um, while also facing the hardships that come with being an undocumented immigrant. And I just, yeah, I loved it. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought the writing was fantastic. Um, I think Catalina is gonna be a character that people uh, kind of, you know, either love or hate. Um, for me, I I think like the times that Catalina was talking about like the real world implications and kind of societal issues, that's where I thought this book really shined when it was kind of more character focused on Catalina herself. Eh. I mean, she's not, she's nothing like me. Like she's not the kind of person that I would uh, probably be friends with in real life. So maybe there was that small disconnect for me, but overall I did really enjoy this. I gave it four stars and it's pretty obvious to me. And like when I read the author blurb and everything that this was inspired by real life events. This was inspired by the author's real experience. And you definitely get that feeling throughout it. It, it almost reads like a memoir in a way. Um, obviously, I don't know all of the events, uh, you know, how much correlated to the author's real life, but it definitely has that quality to it. Um, and I just thought this was a really engaging read. It's super short and I just, yeah, I was really impressed with this. Next up, I read The Collected Regrets of Clover by Miki Brommer. And I did listen to this on audio. Um, this follows a woman who lives in New York City and she's actually a death doula. So instead of bringing people into the world like a doula would do, she uh, kind of helps people that are in, at the end of their life, um, kind of just guides them through that process. Uh, so it is a lot about grief. It's a lot about um, kind of facing this inevitable uh, but very hard reality. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's really focused obviously on death itself, but it's not super sad actually. I mean, there are of course sad moments, but it's not as emotional as I was. I mean, I was a little bit hesitant to go into this book because of the just hard nature of the topic, but it's it's not, you know, the most emotional thing. I think that Brahma does a good job of making the story accessible and not too um, overrun with emotions. Um, and th this also does deal with uh, this character who is really good at her work and really good at dealing with um, the things that people don't want to engage with on a day-to-day -day basis. But on the flip side, she has a very difficult time kind of moving through life the way that regular people do. Um, she's very kind of socially awkward. She's very shy. Um, and a lot of this book is focused on kind of her breaking out of her shell. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think in a lot of ways, it's there's a lot of cliches in here. Um, I did think that the there, the romance side plot was interesting. It, I, it did something very interesting that I was happy with. But overall, I think this is just a very middle of the road book. I probably will immediately forget about this book. Um, it's cute, it's fine, but it's very tame and I don't think it really has the most unique message in the world. Um, so it's fine, it's a fine read, but like I don't think that I would really recommend it super broadly. And then, oh boy. <laughs> the Eyes Are the Best Part by Monica Kim. Okay. This book was one of my most anticipated horror books of 2024 because it came out earlier in the year and it seemed like everybody has been loving it. A lot of people read this for Summerween and they really enjoyed it. Um, so I was happy to pick it up, but I'm sorry to say I, I did not like this at all. In fact, I gave it two stars and I actually had a lot of problems with it. This is a female revenge, female rage um, serial killer slasher story um, and it follows um, she's I think I was gonna say a teenager but I don't know if she's actually she I think she's like in her first year of college um, it follows a young girl who um, is her life is kind of unraveling due to her father 
um, leaving her mother for another woman and um, she's also had a falling out recently with all of her friends and she's feeling very isolated and then something happens that kicks off this kind of uh, just desire for revenge within her. It definitely takes a very, uh, I guess, feminist angle. Um, this is also a Korean American family, so it deals a lot with um, racism and the experience of uh, a Korean American in, again, a, a university system. Um, so these are all things that I was interested in, but I really struggled with the execution. Um, for one, the first half of this novel is very much just a, a straight contemporary story. Um, the horror aspects do not come in until very late into the book. And by then it was just frankly too little too late. Um, and then the other thing is just, I felt that this was very, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to say shallow, but to me it just was not very deep. It didn't push its themes very hard. And to be honest, I've seen this story done much, much better. This book reminded me a lot of Chlorine by Jade Song, but Chlorine is like 10 times better. Chlorine was one of my favorite books of 2023. And it, you know, they deal with a lot of the same messages. There is a kind of transformation between their female protagonist from this kind of childhood innocence into, um, well, <laughs> to two very different things. But um, the idea is that there's kind of this awakening within them. Um, Chlorine also features a um, Asian American, I believe that she's Chinese, but it also deals with um, this Chinese American family that are kind of dealing with the hurdles of living in um, Western American society and, you know, the racism. And they both also kind of deal with sexuality in a way. But just overall, Jade Song is just a far superior writer. And while Chlorine is not like a revenge story, I still think that you are getting all of the same themes but with a much, much, much sharper writing style and message. I took the best part, just it did nothing for me. And honestly, I'm upset. I'm upset because I really wanted to love this and I thought that I would, but uh, no, no, I didn't. And also the horror aspects of it are just like, there is some body horror, but it's not, it's not scary. Not a lot of tension. <sighs> this, yeah, this was a miss for me. And then on audio, I listened to Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. This is a short story collection um, and it is labeled as horror. Um, although I don't know that I would always call it horror. There are some kind of like unsettling things in it and it is um, disturbing at times, but I don't know that it's really like scary. Um, short story collection, I have read from this author previously. I actually read Bora Chung's most recent uh, short story collection called Your Utopia. And the reason that I picked up Curse Bunny is because I loved Your Utopia. Like I thought it was fantastic. I would highly recommend that collection if you are into speculative stories, um, specifically involving technology. I really enjoyed Your Utopia. Um, Curse Bunny, <laughs> I, I did not, I did not like this story collection. I thought that it was all over the place. I wasn't really scared by any of them and I I really wasn't much engaged with them either. Curse Bunny in general just all of the stories do have a connection to like femininity and the role of women in society especially this is a Korean author so in Korean society specifically and it does engage with a lot of conversations around women's rights in some way uh, but I just didn't think that that really was enough to hold together this short story collection I can't hardly remember any of them and overall I just thought this was quite boring and just very messy. I would not recommend Cursed Bunny but I would definitely recommend Your Utopia. And then we have The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. <sighs> wow okay um well I was very happy to get to this because this was one of my 2024 goals was to read The Bluest Eye and uh, Toni Morrison just for the first time. Um, very prolific author um, and I know many people, a lot of people consider Toni Morrison their favorite author so I was excited to finally read a book from Toni Morrison. Um, I did not know what I was getting into with The Bluest Eye. The Bluest Eye is a very, very difficult book because of the subject matter. I, I had, I actually really had no idea. This is following a young girl, um, a young black girl 
who um, kind of just longs for um, the beauty of whiteness. Uh, she wants to have the beautiful blue eyes that the white children have. Um, and really that's all I knew about the story going into it because that's all that I'm told from the back. Um, it says, a brilliant examination of our obsession with beauty and conformity. Toni Morrison's virtuistic first novel asks powerful questions about race, class, and gender with the subtlety and grace that have always characterized her writing. So I, I didn't know what this actually was about, but this has some very horrifying uh, things that happened in here. It's, it's explicit. Um, there are just a lot of really disturbing <laughs> things that, that go on. Um, and because of that, I, I can't give this a rating, really. I definitely understand and I definitely you know, recognize Toni Morrison's uh, brilliance and her contribution to the literary canon. Um, and I definitely understand people's love for her, but this book was very hard for me to read. I wasn't really enjoying myself because of the very dark stuff that happens in here. Um, but there were also moments that I was like, yeah, this is, you know, really brilliant. Um, it just was just a tough reading experience that I don't think I was really ready for because I had no idea going into it. Um, but obviously a very important work and obviously it's well written, obviously it's well done, obviously everything is handled well. It's just, uh, you know, tough, tough content to deal with. Um, so I don't have a rating for it. I'm not going to read it. Um, I will read Toni Morrison in the future. I would love to read um, Beloved. That is one that's high on my list. So I'm going to give her another try. But yeah, I this this was tough. We are nearing the end. Uh, the next book that I read was The Memory Police by Yoku Ogawa. This is um, a speculative, it says, it says speculative, a kind of dystopian novel um, about a town in which people's memories are, they're not exactly being erased, it's just things are being erased from their memory. Um, so it's like objects will just suddenly like cease to exist for them. Um, they won't remember what they're called, they won't remember their use. And there is an entity called the memory police who come around and take people away if they do remember about the things that are being taken from their memory. So, um, it, yeah, this one's a tough one because I have seen a lot of people love this book. Um, for me, it did not do much. Um, I felt kind of just very, like, nothing about it, honestly. Like, I do think I gave it three stars because I think the writing is fine. And I think that there's not a lot of things wrong with this book. But it just wasn't going to be for me because of its very, like, I guess, like, flat and airy tone. Um, like there's not a lot of conflict in this book. It's very slice of life. Um, and even the emotional moments kind of have like a very, like a dullness to them that I just don't really understand fully. Um, I think I know what it was trying to say, but I also don't think I loved the journey that we went on. Um, some beautiful moments in the writing, but overall this was pretty bland in my opinion. And I don't know if it's just because of the story structure or um, it, it is a translated work. So maybe the translation has something to do with it. I'm not really sure. But yeah, I, <laughs> ironically, I will probably forget this immediately. <laughs> and the last book that I completed in September, well, yeah, completed is kind of um, a generous word. <laughs> that is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel, the absolute monster of a book. Um, this was, you know, rated very highly. Everyone, you know, considers this a modern classic. This follows um, an advisor to Henry VIII um, in the time of the Tudors. And it definitely is talking about a very interesting point in history. I think like everything to do with Henry VIII and all of his wives is just like a fascinating story. Like what happened in real life was absolutely insane. And this follows Thomas Cromwell, one of Henry VIII's advisors, through this very uh, kind of tumultuous political atmosphere. And he's kind of moving the chess pieces around, you know, like there's intrigue, political intrigue, and there is cunning and things like that. So that all sounded like a lot of fun. However, this book, oh my god, this book is so challenging, like mentally taxing. 
Like, and I, I, I'm happy to hear that this was not just me, but this book is so hard to read. Like, I could not understand what was going on. It's simply, you know what? It's simply too smart for me. I, I don't know. I do have a lot more to say about this book, but I am going to save it because uh, Caitlin Bandy from Bandy's Books and I, we are discussing this book for our live show for the Backlist Book Club, which is coming out on September 30th if you're watching in real time, or you can find it over on Caitlin Bandy's channel. So, um, so much to discuss with this book, but I will save it for that discussion. And then the last two things I will mention, I did have a couple books that I started in September. Well, actually, um, this one, The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, this one I will complete by the end of today, and today is September 30th, so I will complete it in September, but I am going to save my thoughts on this book because I am reading it for a reading vlog, which I honestly hoped that I would have had out by now, but I kind of got sidetracked because while I was filming this reading vlog, I received my copy of Intermezzo by Sally Rooney, my most anticipated book of 2024, and I am about eh, not quite halfway into it. But um, yeah, I have dropped all other reading plans until I finish this book. So that is what I've been spending the kind of last week of my life reading um, and why all other reading vlogs have come to a halt. Uh, I will not be telling you any of my thoughts about this book because I am going to post a recent release book review for it in which I will tell everything, all of my thoughts. And also it's a Sally Rooney book so it's kind of hard for me to gauge what my actual feelings are going to be about it until I get to the end. So that is what I'm reading and what I have been reading at the end of September. There you have it. Those are all of the books that I read in September. Um, kind of all over the place to be honest. <laughs> my reading in September was uh, a roller coaster, I would say. Now, normally I do my wrap up and uh, next month TBR together, but because October is such a big, important month in the reading community, my October TBR is going to get its own video. But here's what I will do for right now. I have my TBR teacup. And because the last time I pulled a prompt was for reading a book with a red cover, which I completed with Wolf Hall, um, I get to pick another one and we will do this one together right now so that when I make my October TBR, which is going to be based on a lot of readathons and, um, you know, Halloween themed things, I can find a way to work this prompt into those TBRs. So here we go. I'm just gonna grab this, the first one that my hand goes to. A book with a person on the cover. Um, well, that is great because I can already think of a lot of options or one very specific book that I'm already planning on reading in October that would fit this perfectly. So honestly, a more perfect prompt could not have been pulled. So very happy about that. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below. Have you read any of these books or will you read any of these books now based on what I've said about them? Um, I would love to have a chat in the comments with you about any of these books or let me know what was your favorite book that you read in September. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, week, month, and year, and I will see you back here next time. Thanks so much. Bye. Mm -hmm.